It is day four of Revzilla Get On ABV Fest and we are test riding Pan Americas. Chris is back there. My brother's gonna go again. He got to test ride them Friday <sighs> without me. <laughs> I'm very excited to uh, get to finally test ride the Pan America. I've heard so much about them. I'm very excited. One of the most exciting things about this bike to me, besides the fact that Harley Davidson is trying to break into the ADV market, is how cool it is that they made a totally new engine for this bike, the Revolution Max 1250, a liquid-cooled 60-degree 1252cc V-twin. Alrighty, here we go. This is it, you guys. I'm doing this because of you. I'm riding the Harley Davidson Pan America and the seat is in the low position. Ooh. Kickstand is further up, which I expected. Watched a bunch of videos, so I knew. <laughs> okay, and it's already in rain mode. I'm getting comfortable here. Oh, I like that. <laughs> Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh, okay. I had a moment where I couldn't tell where the clutch was disengaging. Getting used to this clutch lever is gonna be. Oh yeah, it's like way out there. Woo! <laughs> The gentleman who was giving us orientation of the motorcycle was talking about all the features. And the thing that I was most excited about was the adjustable windshield. <laughs> the, the ride height is super cool. I think that is very awesome. I think it's amazing that Harley Davidson is thinking about shorter riders and like building in those options and those features for shorter riders instead of us having to make all those things aftermarket. I think that is incredible, and I think that really shows that Harley Davidson is trying to listen to the market and us short people. <laughs> I also see that there is heated grips. It's very vibrating. Of course, like brand new engine, so I didn't know what to expect if it was going to feel like the thumping of a classic Harley V Twin or, or the Milwaukee Eight. There's definitely vibrations. Probably, I don't think it's quite as bad as the Milwaukee Eight. Um, but there's definitely a decent amount of vibration. Whee! <laughs> oh, I didn't even feel it go down. I'm in road mode now. Oh my god. <laughs> Still trying to get used to the clutch. <laughs> Brother pointed out while we were stopped that I was still in rain mode, and he thinks that the rain mode probably cuts the power a little bit. So now I'm in road mode. We'll find out when I get it on the freeway. <laughs> Not gonna lie, I am way more excited about taking these on the challenge course than I am about riding it on the freeway. I've heard lots of things. Um, I know this bike is fantastic on road. I really want to get a feeling of what it's like to like try to do slow speed maneuvers on it and that kind of stuff. I think that is very valuable to know about a heavy bike. <laughs> All right, you guys probably won't be able to hear me on the freeway, so I'll check back in with you in a bit. Woo! <laughs> it, has, uh, it has been a minute <laughs> since I have ridden a motorcycle with that kind of get up and go and not was really fun. <laughs> the acceleration is so good. It's definitely not as smooth as a triple, but it's fun. And I think that is the priority with a motorcycle, first and foremost. Is it fun? Then is it comfortable? And then <laughs> does it really do everything you need it to do? Because <laughs> if it does everything that you need it to do, but it's not fun, then what's the point, right? I still have fun on my CB500X, but it's really 
exciting to get to ride a motorcycle with that kind of acceleration every once in a while. That is probably one of the very few things that I miss about my Tiger was that get up on the freeway, open up the throttle and just go. <laughs> it's pretty, it's, I mean, it's comfortable. I don't feel like I'm overly reaching for the bars. For context, I am 5'7". I believe my inseam is between 28 and 29 inches. And uh, the gentleman who was giving us the orientation said that um, with it in the low position and the adjustable ride height on, its lowest point is 29. So it's just about right for me. I do have a little bit of a tippy toe, um, but if I, you know, as Doodle says, if I one one foot down it it's fine i was really accustomed to that on the tiger so it's not something that's outside of my little house man i could definitely see though it, how that vibration could get to you a bit i feel like up in the higher gears it definitely smooths out a whole lot but if you're in the lower gears that vibration is is very noticeable but of course like everything is an opinion so if you haven't gotten to ride the Pan America yet, I highly encourage you to do so just to get that like feel, to understand what it's gonna feel like for you. Everybody rides different, everybody has different expectations. You know, everybody rides different motorcycles. So what you're accustomed to on your bike may be very different on this motorcycle. Just like I'm not accustomed to this kind of vibration because my parallel twin on the Honda just doesn't doesn't deliver this as much like the only time that I really have to deal with the vibration on my Honda is like going like 75, 80 on the freeway because it's a smaller CC motorcycle. I do get a little vibration in my hands, but I'm pretty accustomed to it. This vibration is totally different. And I think that it's way more apparent in lower gears than it is in higher ones, um, which leads you to believe that yes, it is a motorcycle way more geared to the highway than it is to doing a lot of slow speed maneuvers off road. But that is exactly what I expected. Um, I think sometimes people forget that ADV is, you know, the idea is to do a lot of highway miles, do cross country, overland, do the thing with the ability to do gravel if you want to. It is not purpose built to do everything that a little dirt bike can do. And if you need that, get a dirt bike or get a lighter dual sport, you know? ADV is about like getting those long miles, being able to do all those highway miles and also getting to play in the dirt every once in a while when you want to. I think it's important to build those skills to be able to do those things. Okay, all right, there is the kickstand all forward. Doop, 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 doop. There we go. Neutral is a little bit funky, but brother warned me. That kickstand is really far forward. All right, we just got back from our test ride and now we get to do the challenge course. Are you guys ready for this? I'm ready to watch you. <laughs> We got all the cones set up out here. This lovely gentleman is gonna run it so that I know what I'm going to do or what I'm going to attempt to do. I make zero promises. I did my make my own challenge course. <laughs> Chris did make her own challenge course, so. Side stand up, go ahead. How are those handlebars? This is good. Forward? This is good. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Confirm that we're in off road mode. Which you can see by this icon that we are. <laughs> uh, you see the zero, you're ready to push the lightning bolt button to start. Oh, missed that one. Oh, this is much harder on this bike. 
I will say I'm really grateful that I got to experience the Pan America on this kind of obstacle course and not just on the slab because this kind of obstacle course gave me a much better idea of where all the weight placement is on this 559 pound bike and it's a little bit different than it is on my CB500X which is only 430 pounds but I will say that I'm quite impressed with how Harley Davidson has managed to keep most of the weight on this bike fairly low in comparison to some of its other counterparts but it's still a lot of weight and you can definitely feel it trying to do anything slow speeds on this bike and everybody who's going around saying that my bike is big I want you to look up the specs for other ADB bikes okay but even the Africa Twin still almost 100 pounds heavier than my CB 500 x just saying Overall, the Pan America was super fun to ride. I definitely think it has its class of people who it's meant for. Would I buy one? Absolutely not. It was fun. It fit me. I love the adjustable ride height, but it's not what I need, not what I'm looking for. <laughs> it was fun. Yeah. That was a lot of fun. Uh, it definitely took me a little bit, a couple sections to figure out what I was doing. <laughs> but once I got out of like the S turns and just like took a minute, I was like, it's fine, Amanda, your butt does not have to be straight over the seat. Then I worked out. I think I did very well on the circle. You did. He's nodding. <laughs> <laughs> the spot for the friction zone on my Honda is so much closer to the handlebar than they are on these bikes. And uh, that took me a minute to get used to. Um, but once you kind of get comfortable with that, it's super fun. Like Chris said, it's very recoverable. Like once you've made a mistake, you're like, oh, okay. And you can kind of correct yourself. That's really awesome. Also, I cannot tell when the seat is going on, like going down and up for the, the adjustable ride height. Like you can, I don't, I didn't even notice it, which is super cool. And also just is like the definition of a very well-made machine. Um, it was, yeah, it was super rad. We've had a wonderful time here at Revzilla Get On ADV Fest. And now, unfortunately, it's time to pack up camp and uh, address some trailer issues. <laughs> get that all fixed up. Take our wonderful Chris to the airport and uh, get on skedaddling down the road. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure that you hit that like and subscribe button if you did. If you would like to support the channel and get early access to videos like these as little as $1 a month over on Patreon, you can get these ad-free before the rest of the world. If you cannot do that right now, that is absolutely okay. I appreciate you guys just for being here every single week. And in the meantime, guys, I'll see you later. Today is the day that we deal with our trailer problem. To explain a little bit, because I haven't explained it at all during this whole trip, uh, when Gary and I pulled into Medicine Rock State Park, we jackknifed the trailer and twisted the coupler on a trailer that does not belong to me. We borrowed this trailer from very dear friends, and uh, I don't want to give it back to them like this. So, as you can probably tell, this is twisted like this and uh, the inside here was twisted inside and uh, this actually is a handle that I use to jack up my jacks not the best situation <laughs> everything is fine the bikes were fine nothing happened to my truck in the grand scheme of things probably the best way that a trailer can break <laughs> that sounds very funny doesn't it <laughs> really we're just lucky that it wasn't worse and that we had the tools necessary to try to make a jerry-rig fix. So, my dad and I are gonna go into town, get another A-frame coupler, and cut off the old one, and weld on a new one. Simple as that. Ha ha ha, simple. <laughs> impulse to 
purchase today? We made, yeah, we made a kind of an impulse purchase. But it's gonna be super fun for Rocky Mountain Roll. <laughs> What's the joke? All the bicycles in the yard when you're a kid, and as an adult, all the motorcycles. Wait, there's more. There's two more. There's another one up at the house. And wait, there's another. Question for my end screen crew. Have you ever done a challenge course? What is your favorite part of challenge course? I like just doing the circles over and over again. I'm like, once I get in the groove, I'm like, yeah, this is awesome. Hardest part for me is like the S's. That's really difficult for me. I don't know why. I get into it, I'm like, yeah, this is where I need to be. And then when I try to switch, I'm like, but wait, where, what? <laughs> I'll see you guys later. If I needed a 1200cc motorcycle, I would, uh, I would get myself an Africa Twin.